In a previous lesson, we looked at a basic um, single resistor circuit diagram and we said that an ammeter is connected in series to the resistor that it's meant to be reading the current of and the voltmeter is connected in parallel to the resistor which we want to read the potential drop of. Then we said that um, there is a mathematical relationship between the resistance, the current in the circuit and the potential driving the circuit. We call this Ohm's law and we have V is equal to IR where R is in fact a constant resistance because when we plot values of changing voltage and changing current we get a nice straight line and if we take the slope or the gradient of that line um, we get the value for the resistance which you can see is constant. If we now take two resistors and we connect them within a single loop you can see we say these resistors are in series because there's only one loop, one pathway for the current to travel. Then we, if we measure the potential drop across each of the resistors, potential drop V1 and potential drop V2, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, um, the total voltage is equal to the sum of the potential drops across the resistor. Now with a current, when we're talking a series circuit, with a current, as you can see, it's a single loop, so the current really only has one pathway to take. So it doesn't matter where you are in that circuit or in the resistors that are in series, uh, the current is always constant or the same. If we now take two resistors and we place them parallel to one another, and this simply means that we provide a loop within a loop, so that forces the current to divide. And we call this point here a junction point. So we force the current to divide. And if we now measure the potential drops across resistor 1 and resistor 2, we find that the voltage drop is constant. In other words, the total voltage is equal to the voltage drop here, which is equal to the voltage drop here. However, when we look at the current that divides at the junction, according to Kirchhoff's um, current law, if you like, we get the current dividing this time in a parallel circuit. So we have the current divides uh, depending on how much resistors, resistance it, it uh, contains. So obviously the current will take the path of least resistance so most of the current will flow through the resistor which has the lower resistance. So this is the list of learning goals that will be covered in this series of video lessons in 1.3b. Um, recall and solve problems using Ohm's law. We've, we've introduced that before so there's nothing new there. Um, Contrasting an ohmic and non-ohmic resistor, we saw that an ohmic resistor is one which provides a constant resistance in a circuit. The graphical representation, analysing a graph of current versus voltage, and again we have talked about that and we'll come back to that in greater detail. Then we'll introduce the idea of electrical energy or power power dissipation, in other words how much power is used up in an electric circuit depending on the voltage and the current. Solving problems using um, electrical potential difference, electric current, resistance and power, so we're going to combine these two equations. Um, look at how voltmeters and ammeters are connected in a circuit um, how to draw these circuit diagrams uh, correctly and we will look at series and parallel connections of components and solve problems obviously associated with these especially in the context of something called equivalent resistance and we will design simple series parallel 
and combination of series parallel circuits from a description provided in a word problem. The first requirement when we analyze a series or parallel circuit is that we try and establish what the equivalent resistance might be when resistors there's many resistors that are connected together in the circuit either in a series connection or a parallel connection. So if we have four series resistors connected in line um, we say that the equivalent resistance is simply the sum of all the resistors we simply add them up fairly straightforward. However when parallel resistors are wired together because of the difference in the nature of the current dividing at these junction points um, we can't just simply add the resistors together. So to find the equivalent resistance here we say that 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 etc. Alternatively we can um, rearrange this equation so we can find the equivalent resistance by um, applying this equation here. Let's have a look at an example of how this equivalent resistance works in a series circuit and what impact it may have on things like the voltage or the current. So that's our second stage of analysis if you like. The first being well, let's determine the equivalent resistance and then let's analyze what happens across each of the resistors or in the circuit itself. So here we have R1, R2 and R3 and R now represents the equivalent resistance which of course is the sum of the three resistors. If we were to say well what's the potential uh, drop across each of these resistors then what we need to do is we need to apply um, Kirchhoff's voltage law because whenever um, resistors are wired in series the sum of the potential drops is equal to the potential rise provided by the battery. Because this is a series circuit as we said we have a single loop so the current is constant. Let's have a look at a more complex uh, arrangement of these resistors both in series and parallel. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find the equivalent resistance of these parallel branches. We'll call this equivalent resistance 1 and we can apply the formula to determine the equivalent resistance and there it is there. So this branch here is equivalent to that resistance there. We continue this pattern. Here is another branch. We'll call this um, equivalent resistance 2 and if we simplify the circuit diagram here we get this resistor is equivalent to uh, these resistors in parallel. We'll call that uh, equivalent resistance 3. And we can continue the process if we now take these two parallel resistors and call it resistance equivalence 4 we can then uh, redraw our circuit which was start, which started off to be quite a complex circuit and now we have two resistors in series and of course we can then combine these two resistors and say well um, this circuit here in terms of the total resistance is equivalent to this circuit here with one resistor which has been calculated on the basis of all the separate calculations. So we firstly simplify, this is our first strategy, we simplify the circuit by finding the equivalent resistance. Let's have a look at another example. This time we'll have a look at the current and how the series wiring affects the current. We can apply Ohm's law to this circuit um, because we know that the current running through resistor 1 and resistor 2 is equal because we have a single loop but we can write it in the context of Ohm's law I1 equals V1 and R1 
um, that's the resistance across here and I2 equals V2 on R2. Now if we look at the voltage, the voltage drop across here V1 and the voltage drop across here must add up to the voltage supplied by the battery. So uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the total voltage is the sum of the individual voltage drops across the resistors and of course the current is the same in a series circuit and um, I equals I1 equals I2. So in series wiring uh, the devices are connected in such a way that we have the same electric current through each device. Now we can come up with this equation here so this is the equation for a series circuit by applying Ohm's law across each of these resistors. So if we say the total voltage drop is V1 plus V2, well, we know that if we combine Kirchhoff's law and Ohm's law, it can give us a picture of what's happening. So V1 is IR1 and V2 is IR2. Simplifying that and taking out the common factor I, um, we get the total resistance, which of course, um, since the I's cancel out, the currents cancel out because the current is constant, we get R1 plus R2 equals RS. And that confirms that this series resistors law applies uh, based on uh, verifying it using Ohm's law. We can do the same thing with the um, voltage drop applied across a parallel circuit. So in this case there are two ways of drawing this parallel circuit, whether we draw it this way, uh, the current comes along here and divides and goes along there, or we can draw it in this more conventional way. Now we know that in a parallel circuit the voltage drops are equal. So V1 is equal to V2 is equal to the total voltage. And if again we combine this with Ohm's law, we get V1 equals IR1, keeping in mind that the current's divided now, and V2 equals I2R2. And of course, V is equal to IR, which represents the total voltage in the circuit. So this is the total current, and this is the equivalent resistance. If we combine Ohm's law, again, with Kirchhoff's rules, um, we can come up with an equation, we can verify this equation that we introduced earlier which says 1 over the the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 etc. And we can actually simplify the circuit by determining the equivalent resistance. So based on Kirchhoff's current law in this case, we start, that's our starting point, we combine Ohm's law with that and again we have the voltage remains constant so we cancel out the common factor and we simplify the equation and it gives us the equation used to determine the equivalent resistance of resistors that are wired in parallel. So here is an example of um, determining equivalent resistance from some real values for resistors and circuits. In this first case we have a series branch so as we analyze this we simplify each series or parallel um, part of the circuit to come up with the equivalent resistance and this is quite, quite straightforward. We simply add these two together to give us 470 ohms and then we redraw the circuit diagram if you like to reflect the equivalent resistance in place. Then we find the equivalent resistors, resistance of this parallel branch applying 
our equation for parallel resistors and we get an equivalent resistance of 130 ohms same again this time we have two in series we add them together that gives us the equivalent resistance in the circuit now once we've determined the equivalent resistance so that's our starting point for the analysis of a circuit then we need to look at the different resistors and what the potential drops and the current changes may exist between the resistors so in this particular case let's say we want to find I which is the total that's that one there and we also want to find V1 which is the potential drop across the 1 ohm resistor and I3, I2 and I3 in fact which is the um, current how it divides at this junction So step one, as we said, find the total resistance. Uh, in this particular case, we're working with real numbers. So we add uh, one over R2, which is a sixth, plus one on R3, one thirteenth. Um, write our answer as a decimal, then find the reciprocal to give us the total uh, resistance of that branch. Then we can add up the... Um, equivalent resistance we just found which is 4.1 ohms so there's our equivalent resistor if you like so 4.1 ohms plus 1 ohm gives us 5.1 ohms so once we found that step 2 is to find the total current if this represents our total resistance then to find the total current we apply ohms law that will give us 2.4 amps so that represents the current running in the single loop here but obviously when the current gets here it will divide because of this parallel branch so step three let's find the potential drop so the potential drop one potential drop two and potential drop three we can find those um, again if we consider the potential drop across these parallel resistors keeping in mind that in parallel resistors we get the same potential drop across the two resistors so if this is the voltage across each of the resistors in the parallel part of the circuit we say the current comes in the total current coming in times the um, parallel branch resistance which is 4.1 ohms gives us a total drop of 9.84 volts as I said as R2 and R3 are parallel then we say V2 equals V3 equals V parallel which is 9.84 volts and step 4 to find the currents um, we apply Ohm's law again the current through 2 is equal to the potential drop through 2 divided by the resistance of that particular resistor 9.84 volts on 6 ohms so 1.64 amps so that's the current across the resistor 2 and for I3 we have 9.84 volts same potential drop because they're in parallel the other resistor, resistor 3 is 13 ohms, gives us 0.76 amps. And of course, according to Kirchhoff's current law, we should find that the total current before it goes into the branch is equal to the current afterwards.